Can interesting. Uh, I'm Sunita. I'm here with my colleague Cecilia. We work in the Office of Innovation at UNICEF. Broadly speaking, we're tasked with trying to prepare the organization for what lies ahead. Uh, we've sort of emerged as the team that focuses particularly on the solutions that use technology. Um, and our team, that's UNICEF Ventures, that's based, that's based here in New York, particularly around frontier technology. So a lot of what you heard Rob speak about earlier, some of those really cutting edge technology areas, are the ones that we focus on um, on our team. And the, and the motivation behind the team is very similar, again, to what you've heard our colleagues speak about. It's this observation that a lot of the problems we are faced with as an agency are growing and they're growing faster and they're overtaking us and they're overtaking themselves and they're exponentially really growing to a point where we recognize that we as a system, A, may not be perfectly set up to deal with them anymore and so we need to adapt as institutions but we also need to look for new solutions so that we reach the most marginalized children uh, more effectively and, and at larger scale than we have been so far. So some of those new problems or maybe not so new, but they're affecting us in new ways and they're growing more quickly, our migration, for instance. So more than 50 million children on the move today because of conflict and violence, and with that come problems around identity. You heard um, other colleagues speak about that. How do I transfer my records with me when I move from country to country and I wasn't able to take anything with me? Climate change, 200 million children affected just in the next decade. Again, we as an institution actually are not really set up to deal with that. We have two people, two people, thinking and dealing with climate change. Of course, the rest of us are also tasked to do so, but these are all problems that are really very new to us. To prepare children and young people for a future with no jobs, where the traditional jobs and employment that we know will no longer exist because systems and new technology might actually take over a lot of the skills that we're currently teaching our children in schools. And so even there, something that we need to prepare for. But then again, we're also still confronting a lot of the old age problems. For instance, UNICEF, one of UNICEF's core issues is around birth registration. We heard from a number of people today the importance of identity. But one in four children when they are born still do not get a birth certificate, which then excludes them from accessing services in the long term. So as you can tell, some pretty big questions that we grapple with. And so our team really looks at the intersection of frontier technology areas. So those technology areas that are already at sort of a $100 billion market cap and where we see them intersect with problems faced by a large number of people. We use here 1 billion as sort of a stand-in figure for that, but this is the overlap where our team really focuses on, and we see blockchain and cryptocurrencies to be parts of those technology spaces where we see these opportunities. We, as well as other agencies that you heard from today in the room, are guided in our innovation work by the principles of innovation. They're also called the principles of digital development. I'm just putting these up here quickly because these can be a good reference point if you're looking to develop and pilot new solutions. They have operational guides attached to them and they can be very useful in terms of it, just starting to design and plan out um, experiments and explorations around new technology spaces. We're going to talk a little bit about um, our innovation fund today. This is our mechanism to invest in early stage development and pilot of new technology solutions. So what Cecilia is going to talk to you about in a little bit more detail is the stage of our work in blockchain. And I guess the point that we would like to make as well is that <clears throat> we're currently in early days. Uh, and we have invested in and are ourselves engaged in a number of small-scale pilots. Generally, our team's approach is about building up portfolios of work where individual projects can fail, but the portfolio as a whole will still generate value for the whole organization. And so our, our innovation fund provides um, seed investment to internal projects. So those are led by UNICEF country offices. And I wanted to just flag that because some of you who um, are from governments in our program countries may find this interesting because our country offices are, are engaged in some of these pilots themselves, but also equity-free seed funding to startups that are working in these frontier technology areas. Um, and in short, what the fund is trying to do is invest in a portfolio of startups that are very early stage and help them generate the evidence they need to then build platforms that could be scalable. So really, again, the focus is on these kind of early stage prototypes and explorations. Um, so what we'll tell you a little bit about today are the three areas um, that we are looking at blockchain for. They're focused on new sources of fundraising. So as you can imagine, um, there's a huge market out there right now that 
we're seeing around cryptocurrencies. Um, we're looking at in improving our own internal efficiency. So we had questions earlier around why would we even use the blockchain? Um, so for us, those are really the two, two of the ap ap applications. And then finally, applications in our actual programming. So could we actually use the blockchain or tokens to improve service delivery? And I'll let Cecilia talk a little bit about each of those. Thanks, Sunita. Um, I saw the five-minute message, so I'll try to be very brief um, and tell you a little bit about the three explorations we're doing in terms of blockchain. So, number one, new sources of income. So, as Sunita was mentioning, we are approached by a series of potential donors uh, in many different countries that are interested in donating to us uh, on crypto-denominated um, currencies. So, of course, it's, it's a whole challenge to accept these currencies because we don't have the systems put in place to be able to do so. However, um, UNICEF France was able to um, adapt their inter internal procedures to be able to accept these currencies and develop an actual program um, to accept these donations. So not only that, but they were also able to utilize the currencies that they, were, uh, that they fundraised to support Syrian refugees. So it's, it's also more about uh, the precedent they, they established and how we could replicate the same system in other, in other country offices and see where that leads us. So the second one is about improving our internal efficiencies. So as Ariana was mentioning before, um, the possibility of using what we call contracts that are smart, so basically, um, blockchain technologies that are able uh, to make financial transactions faster, more accountable, more transparent, more efficient. So uh, when you think about um, our organizations, financial disbursements is key to the development of our programs. So be able to use contracts that enable those, those, those sort of efficiencies um, also improve our internal methodologies. So to pilot uh, this idea, what we started doing is a series of hackathons in different parts of the, of the world. The first one has already been implemented in Kazakhstan, um, where we gathered around 100 computer scientists and developers uh, for them to develop these smart contracts, specifically targeting our uh, systems at UNICEF. So third, the usage of tokens in our programs. So this here um, is a registration card from a refugee in the 1940s. So there was a little, like a lot about um, identity uh, programs before um, earlier today. So today, around 80 years after, the registration cards in refugee camps look almost like the same. So it's, it's crazy when you think about um, all the innovations that happened in the world and how, how much innovation we're lacking in this space. So blockchain definitely allows us to explore different uses and mechanisms to help identity, to help like register identities. Uh, and while we haven't implemented a pilot yet at UNICEF, it's definitely something that we want to do in the short run. Related to this, however, we did invest uh, in one company called so uh, Trust Lab in South Africa. We did the investment through the innovation fund that Sunida briefly mentioned earlier uh, in the presentation. So Trust Lab is um, a startup that developed a system for the digital registration of children in schools. So this is key because most schools don't register attendance uh, digitally but in paper. If you have this information digitally, you're able to combine this uh, with information that, you're, uh, that you have from, for example, government subsidies into the school. So um, combining both pieces of information, you're able, and what Trustlove did was, was able to account for how efficient were government subsidies in education in South Africa. So, so this, is, this is major when you think the, the amount of education subsidies that are present in most developing countries and the, the lack of um, accountability for the results of those subsidies. Another example of tokenizing social good was implemented by UNICEF Ireland. What they did is actually giving tokens to Syrian refugees uh, that were planning on moving to Ireland. So there's a lot of experimentation around giving refugees the empowerment to make a choice. 
and the results are being very promising. But it was it was great to pilot the idea of using blockchain to um, empower refugees to make a choice between different goods and services and not choose for them. So uh, this, this the pilot was very successful and it opened the conversation inside UNICEF of how can we develop, for example, a network of uh, different tokens, all for social good, that are uh, connected and interchangeable. So all this brings us back to what Sunita started the, the presentation with, um, our innovation fund that allows us uh, at UNICEF to invest in early stage um, startups utilizing different uh, emerging technologies for change. So we, we recently had an open call for bl specifically blockchain startups working in the same issues that we were talking um, all like during this morning presentations. So smart contracts, um, well, we, we spoke a lot about that. I had the, I read the one minute message. So I think like we, we, at this point, we all know what smart contracts, analyzing data, tokens and mining can generate to us. And uh, we're literally evaluating different startups that we can invest and support very early stage proof of concepts that we can see how can we combine what different um, early stage companies in the world are doing with the objectives we have at UNICEF of uh, solving big problems that affect children. So with that, um, thank you so much.